This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. What if I told you that for almost any line you could draw, there's a shape that could follow it? In a new discovery, a team of mathematicians have come up with an algorithm that creates a shape that can follow almost any path you can come up with, then 3D print them. They've called them trajectoids. And in a surprising twist, these trajectoids could help physicists solve problems in quantum mechanics. Welcome to Up and Atom, I'm Jade. My first thought when I heard this was, how does that work? And my second thought was, I wanna make a trajectoid. So that's what we're doing in this video, discovering how trajectoids work and then making one of our own. The trajectoid mathematicians actually made their code open to anyone. So if you have access to a 3D printer, you can make your own too. So the basic idea is very simple. If I wrap this ball in some Play-Doh and roll it along a path while pressing down on it, the grooves that form on the base of this sphere result in it following that exact path. The harder I press down, the more stable the rolling path. The shape construction algorithm that produces trajectoid shapes essentially mimics this pressing down harder behavior and calculates the exact indentations needed to trace any path. But this method will only work with one period. The shape will just stop rolling after one period of the line or it will just start doing something else. What makes a trajectoid special is that it can roll along an infinitely periodic path, a path where you see the same pattern repeat itself over and over again. This is the difficult part, but fortunately for us, it involves a lot of cool math. The first thing to know is that a trajectoid is essentially made of two parts, the plastic that gives it its shape and an inner sphere. All of the math that makes trajectoids work applies to just the inner sphere, not the plastic around it. This is good news. It greatly simplifies the math. Rather than working with infinitely different funky shapes, we can just work with a sphere. So if we want the trajectory to roll multiple periods, we need to make sure that after its first period, it ends up in the exact right position to begin its second period. For that to happen, the path needs to draw out a closed loop on the sphere. When I roll this ball along my path, you can see that it does not make a closed loop. But when I roll this smaller ball, it does. So you can see that the size of the trajectoid sphere needs to be scaled to match the path. But that's not enough. Not only must the trajectoid be in the right position by the time it gets to its next period, it also has to be in the correct orientation. An easy way to understand this is using a globe. Let's say my trajectoid path starts here, in Sydney. By the time the first period of my trajectoid roll is finished, it's not enough for me just to end up back in Sydney. The globe also has to be the right way up, just like before I started rolling it. Mathematically, this is extremely difficult to achieve. To see why, look at these two Rubik's cubes. I'm going to apply the same rotations to each cube, but in a different order. This cube I'll twist up, then left. This cube I'll twist left, then up. I end up with a different color on both cubes even though I applied the exact same rotations. This effect is called the non-commutativity of 3D rotation groups. It basically just means that when you twist 3D objects around, the order that you do it in matters. When you roll an object along a path, you're essentially rotating it in all sorts of directions. So the chance that you'll end up in the exact correct orientation by the time you finish is extremely low. Let's recap. Our first condition is that our path needs to form a closed loop on the inner sphere of our trajectoid. And our second condition is that the trajectoid needs to end up in the same orientation as when it started by the end of each period. Due to a theorem in differential geometry called the Gauss-Bonnet theorem, these two conditions can only happen when the trajectoid path cuts the surface area of the sphere in exactly half. But According to the trajectoid mathematicians, these kinds of paths are infinitely rare. The probability of stumbling across a path like this by pure chance is pretty much zero. It kind of makes sense if you think about it. I mean, what are the odds that some random line you draw, one, even forms a closed loop? You can see here that the sphere is the right size, but the path still doesn't close on itself. And two, even if you did find a line that makes a closed loop, what are the odds that it just happens to cut the sphere in exactly half? We could cheat by modifying the path, both to make sure the loop closes and to make sure it cuts the sphere in half, but 
Well, that's not as cool. A shape that can follow any line you can draw as long as that line has been modified just doesn't have the same ring to it. So while it might seem like all hope is lost, trajectoid mathematicians used more cool math to get around this problem. See, all the trajectoids we've considered so far have been one period trajectoids. That means that by the time the trajectoid has completed one period of its path, it has completed one full revolution. But did you ever think about a two period trajectoid? A two period trajectoid has to roll through two repeating periods in one revolution. You can see that with this trajectoid here. It completes a first period while on its pink side and then a second period while on its green side. Trajectoid mathematicians found that while it's almost impossible to stumble across a one period trajectoid that fulfills our mathematical conditions, for a two period trajectoid, it's surprisingly easy. The reason why it's so easy to make a two period trajectoid boils down to some fascinating geometry. Roll a trajectoid sphere along one period of a path. This time we're not trying to get the path to form a closed loop on the sphere. Instead, we can connect the two endpoints using a great arc. A great arc is an arc such that if you completed it around the sphere, it would divide the sphere into two equal halves. Because of some fancy differential geometry, you will always be able to find a sphere that's the right size such that this enclosed area is one quarter of the surface area of a sphere. Now here's the clever bit. If we rotate that one period path 180 degrees on the surface of the sphere around our great arc, we end up with a closed loop two period path that encloses exactly half the surface area of the sphere. In other words, the mathematical conditions for a trajectoid have been fulfilled. Now let's make some. To make a trajectoid, you just draw a path in the software and it generates the shape. Then you 3D print them. Before I show you the trajectoids I made, shout out to the guys who discovered these crazy shapes. They were clearly masters of geometry and mathematical thinking. But you know, you don't need to be a professional academic or spend loads of money on formal schooling to develop insights about math. In fact, the best way I know of is free and easy. Practice, curiosity, and the right learning platform. Brilliant. What sets Brilliant apart from other learning platforms is their interactive learning style and heavy focus on problem solving. I worked my way through this geometry course and the transformation I've seen in my problem solving skills is huge. I'm not the most mathematically minded person, which is why I'm pretty good at explaining it. I need to break everything down to its most basic part to understand it. So what fascinates me most about math is the way of thinking. So logical and elegant. With Brilliant, I feel like I have access to that inner world. This might be weird, but one of my favorite parts is actually getting things wrong. I love looking through the solution because it's often something I never would have thought of myself. And I feel like I'm getting a deeper view into how to think mathematically. As I got further through the course, I noticed my own thinking start to change. And before I knew it, I was thinking more mathematically and solving harder problems. It's really rewarding to see your logic skills grow and evolve. Whatever level you're at, Brilliant has a course that will challenge and excite you. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free, for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash upandatom or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Our minds are our best asset and there's no better investment than expanding it. All right, now let me show you my trajectories. First, we went for a pretty generic squiggle. Then I wanted to try something more angular. There was a bit of bounce at the sharp turns, but it still went pretty well. It took a lot of trial and error to get the slope just right, and we had to try a few different surfaces to deal with slipping. Thank God I had my friend Stan helping out. For this one, I was just feeling silly. It started off well, but started to smooth out as it picked up speed. Then we tried the Harbour Bridge. This one actually did better than I expected. I knew from my research that trajectoids have trouble with sharp turns. Theoretically, they should work for nearly any path, but in the real world, the bounce can throw off the trajectory. This is a pretty sharp turn, so I'm actually super oh wait, there it is, yeah. That's more what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Trajectoids also struggle to go uphill because of, well, gravity, but it's sometimes possible if you have the right amount of inertia. Self-intersections can be a struggle too. 
In the real world, friction, inertia, the slope of the table and the mass of the trajectoid all play a part in whether the trajectoid rolls or not. Once again, thwarted by reality. I uploaded a YouTube short about trajectoids last year and a lot of you suggested making one that traces out a signature or a name. But unless it doesn't have self-intersections, go back uphill or have sharp turns, it probably won't work in practice. But Stan had the idea to do a heartbeat, which I thought was really cool. So here's a trajectoid of my heartbeat. We had to nudge it a bit to keep it rolling, but we did our best and in the end, that's all that matters. I feel like now's a good time to talk about why anyone would want to do all of this. The mathematicians that discovered trajectoids were just following their curiosity and having fun. But it turns out that trajectoid math comes in handy in a bunch of fields in physics. One application that I thought was really cool is in the world of quantum computers. Quantum computers use units of quantum information called qubits. Because qubits are governed by the laws of quantum mechanics, they can exist in a kind of mix of two states at the same time. This is called a superposition, and it's what makes quantum computers so powerful. Scientists represent qubits using a sphere with a vector inside it, a block sphere. We can influence qubits with an external electric field. What two period trajectoids tell us is that if we apply the same electric field twice in a row to a qubit, it'll return to the same state it started in. This could give insight into how to control qubits and lead to advances in quantum computing. Thanks for watching. Bye.